In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use simulation nodes in Blender using a intermediate example. And you can see we have this like torus dissolving. This can work for any object. If you've never touched simulation nodes before, this is a good first project because it talks about loops, it talks about attributes that you can send back and forth and all this, and uh, it's just a cool result. So let's talk about how to do that. So in Blender, go to geometry nodes, delete everything and start off with a torus object. This is going to be our particle emitter. Uh, you can use a different object or any object, but I'm just going to make this a high-res torus with a thinness of very thin, and then in edit mode, I'm going to rotate this so it faces this way, okay? Turn this into a Geonodes object. Uh, if you have the new Blender branch, <laughs> Blender branch, uh, 3.5 or above, uh, you're gonna see these simulation nodes. So I'm gonna add a simulation node in and a simulation node out. If you haven't seen my like getting started tutorial, uh, what you need to know is that this is a loop, okay? Uh, the geometry feeds into the loop, we do some operation in the middle, and then uh, this gets outputted, okay? And the loop happens on every frame update. So in fact, let me open up our timeline uh, just so we can visualize what's going on. And this is a bit glitchy. Uh, but it has worked for me. Uh, to get this to disintegrate, we need a bunch of points that move, okay? Uh, so let's start off with taking a bunch of points. This is not gonna be in the loop. This is our initial condition. So I'm going to distribute points on faces, or you could do in volume. I'm gonna do on faces, but I think in volume kind of makes more sense anyways. So we have a bunch of points. I'm going to distribute them. Let's go with 100 to begin with, and then let's view the output. You're gonna notice that the output isn't updating. Uh, you have to go back to the first frame. So that's one of the uh, issues so far. You need to go back to frame one to get this to update. Um, we have a bunch of particles, and what I want them to do is to move over time and like distort and disintegrate. Um, so let's get the moving component. If I use a set position node, which is gonna affect the points inside the loop, inside the loop, and I move this on the positive y-axis by a little, you're gonna see that it moves um, overall. Uh, notice it didn't move one time, it moved 0.05, then another frame 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, it's looping. So you wanna think of this as a velocity, not a position offset in this case. Um, but I don't want it to do it to every single point. I want it to only do it to some points that, you know, to some points that qualify and some that don't. Um, one way to do this is we could say uh, only do this to a certain selection uh, that is greater than uh, some value, right? So I can say look at the, and this isn't the method we'd want to use, but I can say look at the index, right? And uh, only do this if, I don't know. So here's a rough version. If the index is greater, no, less than the time. Right, this is a pretty simple implementation. Every second, one particle will get released. But we're not using the beauty of this uh, geometry node simulation loop, okay? So what I'm gonna do something a bit more complicated, but it's uh, more useful and more flexible. And it doesn't rely on the time parameter. Because what if the loop starts, you know, 40 frames in? Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a custom attribute. So I'm gonna store named attributes. So first we move the points, then we store the attribute, and I'm gonna call this moving, as in, you know, is the particle moving? And uh, whenever we set an attribute inside of our loop, you have to set an initial condition. So the way I want you to think about this, and I, I might be wrong about this, I think you have to set an initial condition. The way I want you to think about this is we set moving equal to zero, and then every time we do this loop, it's gonna get updated. How are we gonna update it? Well, we can reference itself, which is kind of a confusing concept. So I'm gonna use the moving uh, attribute and I'm going to add one. And this is more useful because you can multiply by two each time and it speeds up exponentially. Um, the way I want you to think about this is moving is equal to zero. And then uh, in each iteration, we add one to it. And what I'm gonna look at is say, uh, is the index greater than moving, which is always updating. And you can see, now we have this effect. Now, one thing you might notice is that it goes around the ring. Uh, if you do not want this, this is because indexing with the torus goes around the thing. Um, if you want it to be a bit more random, what we can do, and again, appreciate what we just did here with the loop. Uh, you could also multiply by two, 
So if we start with a value of 1 and we multiply by 2, what's going to happen? First one particle, then 2, then 4, then 6. You can see how it upgrades uh, very quickly. In fact, if I just set it to 1.1, even that's going to get crazy. So you can see it speeds up. Uh, there is a use in this, but uh, I'm going to set it to an additive. Um, if I want some of the particles to move and some to not in a random fashion, what we can do is we can set ID, and then instead of the index, we look at the ID, right? So right now, uh, it shouldn't do anything different because the ID is equal to the index, or no, the ID is equal to zero everywhere, maybe. Either way, we can set the ID to be a random value between zero and 100. Well, <laughs> did that work? It seems that it didn't work. Let's think about why. I don't think there's anything to think about. I forgot that every time you do something, you have to update. You have to go back to the first frame. So I'm going to go here, go back to the first frame, and there we go. Um, each one has a number between 0 and 100. And as we increase our moving, some of them are going to qualify, some of them are not. Uh, but we could do anything with the ID. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say kind of go vertically upwards, like disintegrate that way. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to separate uh, the y, no, the z component, because we want to go vertically, of the position. Okay, I'm doing a bunch of stuff. It doesn't make sense. We'll get to it. I'm looking at the z component of the position, and I'm going to map a range from the bottom to the top. So we know this is a radius of 1, but it has a bit of thickness. So let's say we go from negative 1.2 to 1.2. And what I've done so far is I've set my ID to go from 0 to 1 vertically, right? From negative 1.2 to 1.2, as we go upwards, set it to 0 to 1 with the ID. So what we expect to happen is everything's going to move, or not everything's going to move. We have to update it. Everything's going to move at once, right? Uh, reason for this is that all our IDs are between 0 and 1, and we're adding 1 on the first iteration. So if I set this to point 0, 0.01, and now you can see how this is useful. Again, make sure you refresh it. Um, Hello? <laughs> Why is it not working? And I think I figured it out. It's kind of a technicality. ID has to be set to an integer. Um, so instead of doing that, let's set this to 0 to 100. So when I say going from 0 to 1, uh, it will round it to either 0 or 1 is the issue. And we add 1. So instead of going from 0 to 1 and adding 0.01, we go from 0 to 100 and add 1. You can see now it does the thing. Beautiful. Look at that. Um, okay. So again, our ID goes from 0 to 100, and as we increase this, more and more of them qualify. Uh, now, all we have to do is make this look better. By the way, if we set this to 1,000 and we make sure we update it, uh, it's going to use the uh, same system, as you can see. Um, all we need to do now is make it look good. So first of all, instead of just kind of going vertically, I want to add some kind of distortion. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a noise texture. This is a standard procedure. We mix the color, connect this, connect this, connect this, and set this to linear light. Basically, everything I just did, uh, what it does is it takes our position and distorts it with a noise uh, centered. That's what linear light does. So again, we go back to the first frame. And now you can see it's not exactly as even. To make this more intense, I'm going to bring up the factor. And let's see what this gives us. Yeah, now you can see there's uh, it's not very uniform, right? Um, and it looks more interesting. Um, another thing is it kind of perfectly goes in this direction, and you might think, oh, add a random value, uh, but we can do better. So for the offset, what we can do is add a bit more of a complicated function that, again, it does every frame and evaluates the position for. Uh, what we can do is we can add a vector math. So if I set this to 0.05, nothing has changed, right? 0.05 uh, offset each time. But we can now add a noise function and remember, noise goes from 0 to 1, so I want to center it, so I'm going to subtract it by 0.5. And this might look chaotic, but here we go. <laughs> it does the same thing, but kind of crazy. Uh, bring down the scale. That's going to make it look a bit better, okay? And then, uh, in fact, we can scale the power of this noise as well. So let's make it a tenth of the strength, and hopefully, yeah, that will make it look a bit better, as you can see. Um, in fact, it's a little uh, too weak for my tastes, my advanced tastes. Point two. So there you go. Uh, now we have uh, this disintegrating. Um, a couple of things to kind of enhance this. You can see some of these kind of go in streams together. 
And I think that's a, a thing about like uh, sinks and all this and differential equations, right? Like some of them are very close together and will therefore inherit the same uh, thing. Maybe we can bump up the scale to increase randomness. Mm, doesn't look good. We could add a bit of distortion. I'm trying out a couple of things. Yeah, distortion looks good. I think really it's just a matter of finding a good scale for this so that it doesn't uh, do this automatically. In fact, uh, what I can do is I can also add another source of randomness to the offset. And you want to make sure what you're doing here is very subtle because it's going to do it for every frame. I'm going to go 0 .00, 0 0.05. Let's see what that looks like. So each one also gets a random direction. And that makes it look like it's you know going out a bit, a bit more. Let's go negative 0.02 to 0.02, so it can also go in the other direction with a smaller magnitude. And yeah, that's looking really good. I think the final thing we want to do here, other than instancing on these points, by the way, I'm going to save this. It's going to be available on Patreon. Make sure to join the Patreon link in the description to download. Um, is I want these points to get smaller over time, like they're disintegrating in a sense. Right? Um, if I want to do that, uh, we can take the position, uh, we can separate the x, y, z component as we go across the y axis, I believe. We go from 0 to 1 to 1 to 0. Let's see what that does. Oh, they go negative. Make sure you clamp it. There we go. There we go. Uh, to make them trail longer, go from 0 to 5. And then to make them less intense, let's have the initial scale be 0.1. There we go. So you can see the scale's 0.1, and then it kind of dissolves to zero. And what we can do is we could add a bit of randomness uh, to this, so they don't all disappear at the same kind of like Y pass. As you can see, they're all kind of the same size in this gradient. Uh, we can go from 3 to 6. So that should add a bit of variation to when they become small. In fact, what we can do is we can make this even more extreme, from 2 to 9. So some of them are going to disappear immediately, and some of them are going to last much longer. In fact, they last a little too long, two to six. And that is the look I am going for, boys. I'm going for. Um, final things, final things, is we do want to instance this. So again, I'm out of the loop. We have all the points. You know, I'm out of the loop. We're out of the loop. Uh, we have our points. They're moving over time. And what I want to do is I want to instance on these points a sphere. Make sure you don't do this inside because then you're instancing and then you're instancing on the instances. It's going to crash within three frames. Um, so we're going to do this and the scale, uh, which isn't affected by our radius but should be, uh, we're going to use the radius for. Let's see. Boop. And now our spheres are getting smaller over time. Uh, by the way, once you take this, and let me make this a bit smaller, uh, once you take this and you add like a lot of points, so instead of a thousand, let's say we have uh, 10,000, as you expect, it's going to start lagging a little. Um, so one optimization we can do is some of these points kind of shrink to zero and then they're gone. They're still there and they're still instancing. So what we can do is we can delete them uh, to save on a bit of processing. So just a final step, uh, I want to do all this and then delete the geometry if the radius is like slightly above zero. I mean, less than zero, but you know what I mean. So we're going to take the radius. We're going to ask, hey, radius, where are you? So delete if the radius is less than zero, I believe. Less than 0.01. Let's try that. So connect that to the selection. Nope. Okay, yet again, <laughs> I figured out the mistake. Uh, the less than was correct. Delete if the radius is like very close to zero, less than, you know, 0.01 or 0.01. But uh, this should not be the scale. The scale should be uh, the radius. Let's see what that gives us. We have a bunch of points. They get tiny. Actually, let's look at the instanced version. We have a bunch of points. They get tiny. And look, we have uh, 44,000 instances. And as we keep playing, you can see our instances, the number of them drops. <laughs> And uh, we're going to save some uh, performance here. Of course, another thing we can do is take our sphere and, like, lower the resolution. And look at that. That is an effect. By the way, completely procedural, duh. Uh, but if I go to the x-axis, you can see now it's dissolving from the uh, left side. Um, so you can do that. <laughs> or you can dissolve it from the y-axis, which wouldn't really make sense. It's going to kind of all pop off at once. Um, I would recommend doing this on the Z or the X axis, uh, but something interesting just to note, 
Um, this is for a different tutorial, but what we can do is instead of instancing, we have all these points, right? Let's run this through, through a uh, points to volume. So to make kind of like a smoke effect. So I'm gonna take my geometry, connect it here. Okay, uh, we want to, let's see, points to volume. We have the wrong thing connected, the bane of my existence. And now we have the smoke that is doing the thing. Uh, the radius can be equal to the radius here. And now we have this nice like smoke effect. Um, just a thing, if I make the density higher, we'll be able to see it. Look at that. Render that void cycles. Let's see what we get. Yeah, buddy. That's definitely something. Uh, either way, I feel like I've made enough mistakes in this tutorial and I've gone on long enough. So uh, thank you for watching. Link in the description for the thing with the instances. That's my time. See ya.